So what does first order ODUs mean? Right, so so this is this is one of uh, this is one of the stuff we'll we'll do in the future lectures. We we didn't have any pre-reading uh, due today, but we'll have something due on Wednesday. So when you come to class, we expect you to know some of the basic stuff, right? Like here, uh, what is the first order OD? Uh, you some of you might forgot uh, since you've taken 1803 for a while, right? But like in the future. Uh, you are expected to actually read the material just before coming to class, so you are expected to know some of the basic stuff, right? So first of all, ODE means you are taking only first order derivatives. So ODE means you have functions of one variable. First order ODE means you are taking only the first order derivative to that variable. So here we have, wow, we have the a uh, bracket range equation that's very good uh, from uh, Trevor and uh, huh Bell. Bell is that the right right way to Bell Bell okay Bell Trevor and Bell so the bracket range equation no you have uh, O D E D D W over W is equal to minus D T over W D I S P okay L over D L over DISP. Oh, L over DISP. Okay, good. All right. And uh, you also have DU is equal to minus V times what? D1 over DM. Anyway, so let's let's just uh, focus on the first one. If you write it in the proper form, your W, your weight is a function of time, right? So. So the, prop, uh, the, the, the canonical way to write it is dw dt would be equal to minus w divided by all of this here, L over d times isp, right? So this is uh, basically writing down the derivative of the function as a, a algebraic function of the variable itself. So this whole right hand side, I can call it as f of w. Your f basically is a known function you can evaluate using your computer anytime for any value of w. It can also be a function of w and uh, the most general w and t, right? So, for example, uh, your isp may be a function of time, right? So that that will be uh, another variable to consider. So that's one of the equations we get. Okay, and uh, let's see, we get another equation that's Carlos and uh, Garcia. Yep. And, yeah. And Joe. And Joe, yeah, okay. So here, what we have is uh, x dot or dx dt, that means equal to v times t. What is that? Distance. Oh, we were thinking about like, yeah. So we were thinking about ones that were first order with respect to position. With respect to position. So dx dt should just be equal to v, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. not times t. All right. And you have your dv dt equal to f over m. So that's Newton's law. So this is actually a system of first order ODEs. And effectively, this is actually a second order ODE, right? Because you can write it as x double dot equal to f over n. So that's another very good thing we came up with uh, uh, our example here is you can actually convert a second order OD into a system of first order ODs. So what we are going to be studying in this lecture, how to solve first order ODs, is actually much more useful than just the solving first order ODs. Because you can convert a second order, you can convert a third order, you can convert an arbitrary order ODE into just a system of first order ODEs and use whatever method that we study in this lecture. All right. And uh, we have an object moving with friction that's by Faisal, Sam, and Yuan. Right. So that example is, uh, um, well, what we have here is, oh, we have two examples. One is object moving with friction. That's if I write it in canonical form, it's dv dt equal to minus bv over m, right? I just uh, rearrange the terms. Just to write dv dt again, the whole right-hand side is a function of v, right? 
Okay, another system is spring mass system. So they defined it as, uh, oh wait, you defined it. Okay, so what we defined it as dx as a vector dt equal to a matrix. Okay, good uh, linear algebra. That's going to be very useful in this class times x. So basically, my x being a vector is a, is a vector of two variables, which is a function of time. And this right hand side is a function f now being also a vector of the same dimension as a vector function of x. And by the way, in the previous example, you can also write this as d d t of a vector, which is x and v, right, being v and f over m. That's another way to write this second order OD as a vector first order OD. And you can always do that. All right. So then we get, uh, 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 if I pronounce it wrongly, uh, Chloe yeah. and uh, Maya. And Maya? Or yeah. Maya? Okay. And the example, actually two examples. Only the first one. The second one ended up second. Okay, the second one uh, is crossed out. So I'm just going to write the first one. <laughs> dv <coughs> dt equal to, I'm also going to re rearrange your uh, mass. So divide it out, minus g minus d over m. So that's a, a system moving vertically but with a drag. All right. So d over m is the drag. So so this is a uh, uh, this is quite interesting because uh, the d the drag presumably I mean, if you follow the simplest aerodynamic uh, model would be proportional to the square of velocity, right? So so this is what we call a nonlinear ordinary differential equation. So I know like in the beginning, there are people who are confused about first order and nonlinear, or and linear, right? They, some of you may think of a first order ODE has to be linear. That's not the case. You can have first order nonlinear ODE or have second order linear ODE. I mean, it's, uh, it's completely independent. So, so if is nonlinear, if d is proportional to v squared. So d is a function of v that is not linear. And in previous, let's look at the blue example. Is the blue example linear or nonlinear? Linear. It's linear, right? How about the red one? Well, the red one kind of depends what uh, f depends on, right? If f doesn't depend on anything, it's linear. If f, f depends linearly on position and velocity, again, it's linear. If f involves something like aerodynamic drag, then it is going to be nonlinear.